Okay, so so far we've looked at some relativistic approaches to ethics, and we've looked at two consequentialist ethical theories, egoism and utilitarianism. And we call these theories consequentialist because they both locate the right-making or the wrong-making feature of a particular action in the results or anticipated results of that action, in the consequences of the action. So for the egoist, the question is, what action will generate circumstances that are most aligned with my individual interests? And similarly for the utilitarian, the question is, what action will generate the greatest amount of pleasure, or happiness, satisfaction, contentment for the greatest number of people? Because that action will be, by definition, the morally correct action. Now you can see that for both of these consequentialist theories, why someone does something, their intention or their motivation, and what in particular they do aren't, uh, in, at least initially, morally relevant. What matters when we're facing a dilemma is, what's the situation that we're in? What are our circumstances? And what do we anticipate will be the consequences or the results of the different actions that we're considering taking, right? That's what's relevant. Now, this can get us kind of into a funny ethical position if we adopt either of these ethical theories. And you can see that illustrated in this example that I gave you in your thought primer. Why shouldn't we, as a group, come together and humiliate you? Really? If I'm thinking about this from an ethical egoist standpoint, and I see a mob uh, gathering to humiliate you, is it in my best interest to try to stop the mob or go along with the mob? And I can see an argument being made that, well, unless you, as the object of humiliation, have something that is of greater value to me than avoiding being the next target of the mob that's coming after you, it might actually be in my best interest to join the mob, right? This is the dynamic of bullying, is that sometimes people participate in the bully, bullying out of fear of becoming the object of bullying, so they participate in it as the aggressor. Um, I can also see how I might be able to justify this bullying through utilitarian logic, right? Because if it really is true that as a group we're going to experience um, these greater goods that I identified for you, that we're going to feel superior to you and that'll boost our confidence and we're going to cohere more as a group. Um, and if those things are producing a greater amount of good than the suffering that you're enduring, then it seems like just like we justified enslavement, um, through utilitarian logic, we might be able to justify humiliating you. So why not do it? And maybe something we need to think about is, well, what happens when you don't think about other people as just means to an end, right? We don't think about a collective group of people and using some number of those people as a means to our end, or we don't think about us as egoists trying to maneuver around other people to get our our own individual best interests satisfied. Maybe we, what happens when we start to think of people as having dignity, right? So what is human dignity? I asked you to consider that. And, and I would suggest to you that it has something to do with your intrinsic worth. It's whatever that was that you thought made humiliating you the wrong thing to do. It was that aspect of you, your, that feature of you that you think has value in and of itself and shouldn't just be used, uh, and that you shouldn't just be used as a tool in somebody else's efforts to get what they want. Uh, in other words, you don't like it when people take away your dignity. So how do people take away your dignity? I will frequently ask students who have worked in the service industry, like restaurants or you know, whatever, um, does it bother you? When you're at work and you are providing a service for somebody, you, they've come to you and they've ordered a cup of coffee. They don't greet you. They don't return your hello. They don't uh, thank you when you've given them their, their, their product that they've purchased, the coffee or whatever. They kind of treat you just like a machine. And people frequently say, that really bothers me. And I think what bothers them is that they're not being acknowledged as a human being. They're being treated as a tool. And that's tools have value in what they can be used for, right? They have instrumental value. But as human beings, we believe that we have intrinsic value, that regardless of what my usefulness is to you, if there is any of that at all, 
we all still believe that our individual lives have value. You can sort of see that reflected here in this cartoon where you have a boss um, talking with another employee and he says, a worker is a human being? Why wasn't I informed of this, right? So as a human being, we, we like to believe that we have unique value. Um, and we like to have that value respected by being acknowledged as a person of worth in and of ourselves and not merely a tool for somebody else to use, whether it's to bring about the pleasure we feel in bullying someone or the benefit that we get in having somebody serve us a cup of coffee. So a question I'd ask you to consider is this, is if human dignity has to do with human worth, and if, as it clearly seems the case, someone can take your dignity away through things like enslavement um, or like treating you as a, a tool to be used for their own ends, is it possible that you could behave in a manner that contradicts or, that's probably not the right word, is it possible for you to behave in a way that we would call undignified that compromises your worth as a person? In other words, it's, it's obvious others can compromise your worth. Is it possible for you to compromise your own worth as a human being? And if so, how could you? What does that behavior look like that uh, earns the label of being undignified?